Welcome back to the video answer explanations for scrambled paragraphs in verbal exam 06. And if this is your first time, thanks for joining us. I think you'll find the video explanations much more helpful than the written answer explanations for scrambled paragraphs. It's really helpful to take a few moments and see how somebody walks through it and reasons through ordering the scrambled paragraphs. And this time, we're going to include a lot of our new processes or procedures that we've incorporated in our more recent video tutorials about scrambled paragraphs. Recall you'll have about three minutes to solve a scrambled paragraph, or at least that's what you should budget. About twice a typical problem on the test for which you should budget a minute and a half. And that's why, of course, the raw scores are generally counted for twice as much on a scrambled paragraph. The first step is to identify the subject of the paragraph after reading the intro sentence in just a few seconds. And secondly, try to identify what type of paragraph it is. Paragraphs or essays generally fall into a few different categories. They can be descriptive, explanatory, they can be chronological, they could be compared contrast. So why do we do this? To put a logical structure to the paragraph and help us solve it. So let's begin. Of my ancestry, I know almost nothing. Uh, certainly the topic is ancestry, so I assume it's about family history. And if I were to choose the type of paragraph, I would say this is an explanatory. It's going to explain how or why the author knows very little about their ancestry. I think the next step is to identify and underline the repeat words, the pronouns, and the transition words. And within another 30 seconds or so, I will try to outline or underline, I should say, all the repeats, transitions, and pronouns that I come across or can identify quickly. So the next step is to begin actually ordering our sentences. We would like to not just necessarily find the first follow-on sentence, but we want to find the best or most obvious sentence pairs. In many cases, that's not the first follow-on sentence. The first sentence pair that jumps to my attention is you and S. Both are discussing the topic of the author's mother. You says, my mother, I suppose, attracted the attention of a purchaser who was afterward my owner and hers, and our addition to the slave family attracted about as much attention as the purchase of a new horse or cow. S seems to follow with additional information of my father I know even less than my mother, not even his name. I think those are probably not the first group of sentences to follow because of my ancestry I know almost nothing. There are three possibilities that jump out to me to be toward the beginning of the paragraph. I have been unsuccessful in securing any information that would throw any accurate light upon the history of my family beyond my mother who had a half-brother and a half-sister. Q, my family history was simply another unfortunate victim of the institution which the nation unhappily had engrafted upon it at the time, slavery. T, in the days of slavery, not very much attention was given to family history and family records, that is, black family records. So R, Q, and T all follow with the idea of family histories and not being able to shed a great deal of light on the author's family history. So this becomes a curious question. Which of these, which I suppose come before the, the author's mother and father, which of these is perhaps the first follow-on sentence? But if I look at Q, I find it really seems to be summing up. In this case, it's not adding a great deal of new information. My family history was simply another. Now the word another, the keyword tips off that it's not grouped ahead of R and T, but it might just be another example or a repeat of the ideas of having difficulty finding out about his family history or ancestry. And that is quite typical for the last sentence in an explanatory scramble paragraph. It is just summing up. It won't be adding anything now. If Q is indeed the final sentence, the question still remains. Which is the first follow-on sentence between the two choices, R or T? I would go with T after R. And the reason being is T explains R logically. So R says, I've been unsuccessful, the author, in securing information about his family history. And the reason why he has been unsuccessful is because in the days of slavery, not very much attention was given to family history and family records, especially black family records. So logically, I think 
the ordering of r then t makes the most sense. In total, the ordering I prefer is r t u s q. Thank you.